have seen intense anti-government protests. The demonstrations began after the presidents in each country made economic announcements, which in turn sparked a massive public outcry. But there are protests with similar motives happening all over the world as well. Lebanon, Iran, Iraq, Colombia. Many of the crises stand out for being the most severe periods of turmoil in at least a decade. So what do all these protests have in common? Experts say the answer may be inequality. People around the world are rising up against the growing gap between the rich or political elite and the poor. After all, many of those protesting are people who have long felt shut out of the wealth of their countries. In at least four cases, a rise in price for a key service had proven the final straw. In Ecuador, that final straw was rising petrol prices. In Iran, gas prices were also the tipping point that got people outside and on the streets. In Lebanon, it was a tax on internet calls, like those made via WhatsApp. In Chile, a 3.75% fare hike was announced for the public transit system. Here's what Chile's metro stations look like following that announcement. A slowing global economy and a youth bulge in many countries has produced a new generation that's frustrated. According to the International Labor Organization, 44% of young people of working age are either unemployed or working jobs that don't pay enough to escape poverty. And an increase in youth unemployment is one of the best predictors of social unrest. مطالبنا واضحة اللي مثل ما تشوف قدامك إحنا ليش الصناعة العراقية متوقفة شنو السبب وليش البطالة منتشرة بالعراق بلد غني بلد نفطي بلد صناعي بلد زراعي بلد تجارة ليش الشباب قاعدة على طالة بطالة no hay que bajar los brazos y hay que seguir viniendo hay que seguir manifestándose porque no hemos conseguido absolutamente nada y además sigue la represión نحن ليه بنختلف عن غير أجيال؟ لأن غير أجيال ضلوا هون بهالنظام 30 سنة وضلوا ما انتفضوا، بس طفح الكيل، يعني لما نجي نصرخ نحن قاطعين بالكافيات عم نقول يا شعب اللي بالكافيات طلعوا خلص بكفي، لأنه عن جد بكفي، 30 سنة نحن ما ما فينا بقى نتحمل، ونحن جيلنا اللي بده ياكلها بالنهاية. Citizens worldwide continue to feel disillusioned with unresponsive governments. while activists are sure that street action is the only way to force change. Hi, Steve here. I never knew exactly how God's word was going to be fulfilled in Matthew chapter 24 and in Revelation chapter 6, but the events that Jesus spoke about are the same things he showed John in Revelation chapter 6. I'm going to show you exactly where I believe we are in Revelation prophecy. There may be some who disagree with me, but I believe you'll soon find out that what I'm showing you is a fit to these scriptures. God's word is crystal clear to anyone who studies it and has an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. I didn't know that it would be the globalist Luciferians who would be pushing this agenda through and causing people to be without peace about what they see happening. I woke up this morning after having a very sleepless night, on and off and dreaming as if I'd been drugged, only to see our skies once again geoengineered with their toxic heavy metal nanoparticled aerosol spray. Even in the United States, we see hope beginning to diminish and depression sweeping the land as we see the globalists literally implementing everything they said they were going to do. And the criminal cabal in this government is assisting them in every way possible. So let's look at what Jesus said about the time we're now in and how it relates to the prophecy in Revelation chapter 6. Jesus said, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in different places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. This is what we see happening. And when we see the second seal opened, peace will totally be removed from the earth, and then we will see the nightmare really kick in. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. 
that they should kill one another, and that it was given unto him a great sword. As I've said before to those who still believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, it might help you to watch one of these videos that I posted on my Brighteon channel about exactly when the catching away that Paul spoke about will take place. I've never taught that it won't happen, but it's when it will happen that people have been lied to about and are believing this lie. Jesus said, but on that day and hour, no man knows, no, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Watch therefore, because you don't know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, you also be ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man is coming. It's amazing to me that people who don't know the Word of God will always say that there's no way you can know when Jesus is coming back. And yet Jesus says that no man knows the hour or the day. He never said that there'll be no way for you to know the season or the times you live in. Otherwise, why would he use in the parable, what watch? And why would he tell you to watch if it was not possible to even observe anything about the day and the hour he would come back in? As I've already taught many times in previous videos, he told us the general time he would be returning. We don't know that day, that specific day, and that specific hour, but we do know what will be happening preceding his return. It's just like the Apostle Paul said, that that day cannot happen until the apostasy take place and that man of sin is revealed. That's what it says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. I understand that it gives people a false, comfortable peace that the Lord will rapture us all out of here before anything harmful, hurtful, or painful ever takes place. But that's not what the Word of God tells us. The Bible says Jesus went to the cross despising the shame, but he did it anyway. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then we've got the people that argue, and they say, but Steve, God has not appointed us to wrath. And I'd say, you're right, he hasn't. So watch one of my videos or a couple of them on the rapture to bring you up to speed on what the Bible teaches because if it's not in the Word of God, I'm not going to teach it. So where do I think we are right now according to the Bible? We are between the first and the second seal in Revelation, chapter 6. I believe when the second seal is opened, we will all know it. And until then, we will continue to see nation rise against nation, kingdom against itself, we'll see famines in different places, we'll see more earthquakes, and we'll see the persecution of Christians on the rise, especially after peace is removed from the earth. All these things must take place, and they will, till the will of God is fulfilled and he brings all wickedness and ungodliness to an end. If you don't know him personally, and you'd like to, I leave a link in the description box below. Click on that link to go to a page with a simple prayer that will help you get started in a relationship with the living God who created all things, including you. Think about it.